Hi everyone, my name is Miguel de Villa, and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Go Engineer. Today I'm here to present a quick tip on how to use SOLIDWORKS Treehouse with the Skeleton Sketch Part method. If you're not familiar with the Skeleton Sketch Part methodology, it's a top-down modeling technique useful with very large assemblies where you have your top-level assembly and its sub-assemblies contain a part with several master sketches in it that describe the positions and profiles of critical components within the overall assembly design. These master sketches are then derived or copied into parts of individual components and sub-assemblies so that certain elements of their designs are derived and controlled from the master sketches and the skeleton sketch part as a whole. The primary advantage of this method over, say, a master sketch at the assembly level is that when working with these sub-assemblies that contain the skeleton sketch part, you do not have to have the top-level assembly open or checked out in any way in order to continue deriving new sketches into new parts. While this assembly structure can be generated completely without SOLIDWORKS Treehouse, the visual nature and ease of use of Treehouse make creating these sub-assemblies and distributing the skeleton sketch parts quick and easy to do. Let's begin by opening a fresh session of Treehouse. And you can find Treehouse by searching for it right here in the Start menu. And you'll find that it's actually already there. It was part of your SOLIDWORKS installation. Now that Treehouse is open, we're going to be using these icons here on the upper left hand side to create our assembly structure and they correspond to some of our commonly used SOLIDWORKS file templates so that you can use your own templates you can check out this treehouse options button right here in the bottom right template locations and simply hit add to add an additional folder to treehouse once you've done that you will see your file templates reflected here in these icons and you just need to drag and drop your template of choice in place and it will go ahead and create that structure. I'm going to call my first assembly here my top level assembly. To add additional sub assemblies and components to this all I need to do is repeat the process drag and drop this time onto my top level assembly itself and I'm going to do this a couple of times in order to create a couple of sub-assemblies within it. To make a part, go ahead and do the same for the parts right here. Just drag and drop it onto the top level assembly. Renaming is quick and easy. All you need to do is highlight this name field and type in the name you want. I'm going to name this SSP for Skeleton Sketch Part. Now I need to go ahead and insert this into each of my sub-assemblies. To make a copy of the SSP, I'm going to hold down control, click, drag, and drop onto each sub-assembly that I want it to be a part of. Now all I need to do to finish this off is add some more parts to each of sub-assembly to represent the individual components whose geometry will be driven by that SSP. If I need to make additional copies, I can always control, drag, and drop just like so. Now, before I can export this to actual SOLIDWORKS files, it's best practices to actually specify a default location by hitting the list view option right up here on the HUD. I'm going to go ahead and select a default destination within my PDM vault so that all my external references that I'm going to make are managed by SOLIDWORKS PDM so that nothing is lost or broken. You can also manage these locations on an individual file or sub-assembly basis. Whatever works is up to you. Now that we've specified our default location, all we need to do is hit export to SOLIDWORKS documents. And this will go ahead and open SOLIDWORKS and close it again and again in order to generate this assembly and all of these files within our specified file location. And I'm just going to give this a minute to finish up. Okay, now we're back 
after Treehouse is done exporting all of those files. Now as we can see, they're right here in the folder we specified. Opening up our top level assembly, we can see right from our feature tree that everything has been created per Treehouse's specifications. But also note, a lot of our components and sub-assemblies are underdefined and just floating in place. Now since we don't have any geometry, I highly recommend going in and fixing components at least initially in place so that they don't fly around as we're deriving sketches and creating our initial geometry. You can always go ahead and float them and add mates later. Now let's go ahead and test this methodology by opening up our skeleton sketch part and creating some basic geometry that we'll want to derive into our sub-assemblies later. As I mentioned previously, we don't have to have the top level assembly open or even checked out in order to use this method. Let me go ahead and open one of my sub-assemblies here. And because it has the skeleton sketch part itself in it, I can still derive my sketches in the ways that I need to. In order to derive these sketches into my new component right here, I'm going to go ahead and edit this part in context. And to derive a sketch, you have to select the sketch that you want to derive, the plane or face in the part you want to derive it to, and under Tools, sorry, Insert, Derived Sketch, this will create a sketch in our new part that has an external reference back to the SSP and a little note here saying derived. Now because it's a derived sketch we can still move it about but it does not have anything we can change. We can add some relations, even change its rotation or position, but fundamentally we cannot change its overall dimensions. But since it is a sketch, we are still able to turn it into a feature. In addition, we can also use methods like convert entities or just copying and pasting a sketch in order to create an independent copy. These are all valid ways of transferring information from our skeleton sketch part into any of our other components. Now, in order to change this particular feature, I'm going to need to go ahead and edit the skeleton sketch part itself. Now you can see all the geometry in this particular part is created and derived from my skeleton sketch part. When applied correctly, you can use the skeleton sketch part as a framework for your much larger design to control various act aspects of it from one unified source. This has been Miguel de Villa from Go Engineer with a quick tip on how to create skeleton sketch part assemblies using SolidWorks Treehouse. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tip. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.